I've got some hardware. Um, it's made out of nickel. It's not made out of nickel. It's probably made out of copper or something like that. It's got a nickel coating on it. How they do it is by electroplating it. It's got some rust on it. Uh, nice piece. I don't want to throw it out, so I'm going to sand off the rust. And I'm going to electroplate it. However, I need to make an electrolyte, a nickel electrolyte. Or I'm going to try to make an electrolyte. I'm now, I don't know if I'm going to be successful or not, but that's what we're here to try to do. Um, and while we're at it, since we're making the nickel electrolyte, we may as well make a copper electrolyte also. So, nickel electrolyte, copper electrolyte. We're going to see if we can do it. It's not guaranteed. So that's next. So this is going to be a DIY project like most of them are, but I needed to purchase some pure nickel. I didn't have any pure nickel around and I don't know where to really, to be honest, I don't know where to find it in the house. So I had to go to Amazon and purchase this bar of nickel. It's half a millimeter thick and about six inches long. It cost me $13. And to be honest, paying $13 for this amount of nickel is kind of annoying, but what are you going to do? There's we need power to make the electrolyte. So I need two pieces. I need the positive terminals going to be attached to one of the strips, which is the anode. And the negative is going to go to the other, which is a cathode. I'm going to cut this into two pieces. One's going to be four inches and one's going to be two inches in length. Now the commercial way to make a nickel electrolyte is to use nickel sulfate and nickel chloride. I don't have either laying around the house, so I'm gonna use vinegar and salt. We're using vinegar as the solution. We're using salt. The salt will improve the electrical conductivity of the electrolyte. Um, it'll facilitate the efficient flow of, electric, of an electric current during the process and we're also going to add some boric acid um, the boric acid acts as let's call it a buffering agent it stabilizes the ph in the solution uh, helps maintain a stable ph so what i'm going to do here i'm going to use half a liter of vinegar 500 milliliters and i'm going to use 20 grams of salt and 20 grams of the boric acid i'm going to try to dissolve the salt first into the solution, then I'll add the boric acid into the solution, try to dissolve that, um, and then we'll get going. And to be honest, I don't think the boric acid is, is a necessity, um, but I would use the vinegar salt. Those are readily available. I bought this for boric acid on Amazon. Once the solution is prepared, we're going to add the two nickel plates into the solution and attach a positive and negative current. I want to keep it around 20 volts and approximately one amp. What happens is when the electric current is applied, the nickel ions in the solution are attracted to the cathode, right, which is the negative portion. And at the cathode, the nickel ions gain electrons um, and are deposited as a metallic nickel. Um, at the anode, uh, the nickel metal loses electrons and dissolves into the solution as nickel ions, replenishing the nickel concentration. Basically what's happening is the nickel ions are getting removed from the anode and what we're going to see is, or hopefully what we're going to see is that the, the nickel at the anode side, the bar will start to deteriorate. It'll get eaten away as the nickel is removed from that anode and the ions get dissolved into the solution. The solution should turn a nice dark green, an emerald green. That is the nickel electrolyte that we're going to use to plate whatever we're going to plate. So let's see what happens.
so it's been two hours. We've got a nice dark green solution. And this is what we'll use to plate, to electroplate um, any metal we want. And as you can see from the anode here, it's just eaten away. Um, it's half the thickness and it's just got scratches in it. So this is just what happens to the nickel. It gets absorbed into the solution. We're just going to filter it here, get it into a jar. And before we test it out, before we electroplate something, we're going to make the copper electrolyte. So that's next here. So the copper electrolyte process is exactly the same. I'm going to use the vinegar, the same amounts. I'm going to use boric acid and I'm going to use salt, same amounts. I had my Alexa there. I was going to video the two hour process of watching a liquid turn blue, but the battery in my camera died. So, you know, we're foregoing that excitement of watching some water turn blue or watching a liquid turn blue. So apologies for that. It's a positive. Boric acid doesn't dissolve. It will dissolve as this heats up. This will heat up. We're going to count down two hours. This is weird. Okay. So we're at two amps and 13 volts. You'll see that it's started already. Alexa, count down two hours. Two hours. Starting now. Apologies, my camera battery died, so I wasn't able to show you two hours footage of a liquid turning blue. Anyways, we have the nickel electrolyte on the left here. We have the copper electrolyte on the right. Notice the difference in colors. What I have here is a Canadian penny. It's 1973. Up until 1996, Canadian pennies were 98% copper, 97 to 99. They made them zinc with a copper electroplate on it, copper coating. And after 99 until 2012, they were made of steel with the copper coating. Uh, they went out of circulation after that. What we're gonna do is we're going to electroplate this copper penny with nickel, copper for 15 minutes, copper, copper. See how copper. it turns out? Hopefully it'll work or else all this has gone to waste. After which we will copper. take this copper and turn it back into a copper. Copper. So from copper to nickel, copper, copper. The nickel will electroplate it in back to copper. 15 minutes each. They're going to be thin coats. Copper. Um, I have cleaned the penny. I have first let it soak with some brasso. Copper. Cleaned copper. it somewhat. And then I soaked it a little bit in acetone, get all the oils and all the dirt off. So it should be a fairly clean copper penny. Copper. Copper. Here's copper. copper anode. The nickel copper. anode. Copper. 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 I want about five volts. Copper. Maximum. Copper. 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 I've got two and a half there, so touch the copper. Copper. I'm recording, right? And we'll touch negatively there. Copper. 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 Okay, 15 minutes. Moment of truth. Oops. Let's take a check. Take a check. After 15 minutes, you're not going to have a thick coating. Be very thin. You're not just dead for an hour or so, or uh, you want to have a thicker coating, but a 
That's natural coded. It ain't copper anymore, folks. It is nickel. Alright, let's go back to copper. Turn it off. Get there in here. Whoa. Stop. Get in here. Get the copper, you know, get the copper anode. To the side. Then turn the power on. We're going to go down with 500 milliamps. We have three, two and a half volts only. So we'll give this 15 minutes. And we'll see if we go back to copper. Well, there you have it, guys. Um, took a copper penny, turned it to nickel, turned it back to copper. Oh, by the way, what you see in the background here, that washer, I'm just doing another test. But uh, wasn't that difficult. It was actually kind of fun. I'll just keep these two solutions. I will be nickel plating the hardware that I have, what the original purpose was for. Um, until next time, thanks for joining. Appreciate the view. Please like and subscribe, only if you feel it's worth it. Until next time, see ya, bye.